Good afternoon. I'm Gary Bills, the writer. This is Heathery Geddes, the artist. And we're here to talk about our book, Bizarre Fables, which has taken up more than 20 years of our life to bring to the table, thanks to the interest and the support of the publishing house, The Little French. Heather, we wrote a lot of these stories, I wrote a lot of these stories, and you illustrated them, when we were at Uplands Farm Flat, just up the road in the middle of the deep Herefordshire countryside. And it was one of the most idyllic moments of my life. I remember writing away on the old Amstrad and you were painting away right next to me. And we had huge enjoyment, as well as great faith that the people would want to read and see these wonderful uh, stories brought to fruition. But I have to say that as a writer, I, I lost not faith in them, but I moved on. As you know, I stuffed them in a drawer and you, you have actually created new imagery for this great new book out this year, brand new book, Bizarre Fables, and you worked really hard. And I had the easy part for this book because all I had to do was proof it. You've done lots of illustrations and you feel just justified to be proud of this wonderful piece of work. How did you keep the faith for so long? Well, it was something to, uh, to believe in, Gary, isn't it? And uh, it was my love for you, really. Oh. And uh, it was a great honour to be part of it, and that's how I feel about it. Well, you brought a great deal to the table yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, people need to know that uh, a number of these stories were joint plotted. Um, I wrote them, but without Heather in my life, these wouldn't have seen the light of day. Can I ask a question too? Of course you can. Um, because we, when we first met each other, it was the story of the blanket of the moon that really inspired me. Mm -hmm. And uh, just felt um, so natural. And and, and you know, I, I just wanted to meet you. I just thought it was exciting because I, I, I have actually uh, met a few writers in my life and I wasn't very impressed, I'm afraid, <laughs> I have to be honest. But when I met you and, I, and you wrote, read that story to me, I was really charmed. And uh, so that really what started it off really, wasn't it? The, the story of the blank the blank moon. The moon. So, so which, yeah. I, which as you know, I, I wrote initially um, mm. for our friend Esther, mm. and uh, she was going to produce a, a magazine full of stories and asked me to write one. The magazine never saw the light of day. But I wrote that just before we met. I think I sent it to you, didn't I? Mm. And that, that set it going. Mm. And I think it was you actually who said that, we, you know, more of these stories should be produced and illustrated, and you had, you, you always had a vision of a of a, a coffee a coffee book sort of publication, and and here it is really. I mean, I I was working in the theatre um, before I met you. You were in the West End, and uh, it took a lot out of me really uh, working uh, as a costume uh, renovator and, and the. Uh, you know, doing sort of like job to job with the theatre because it's never really stable. No. And uh, I didn't realise, I, I mean, I went to did a, a course in, at Central School of Speech and Drama and uh, it was exciting, but it was exhausting at the same time. And uh, I was really trying to find myself in theatre because I've always been a creative person and I felt really sort of like confused on where my creative abilities sit in. But the book itself was a journey uh, at something I wanted to, to do that was more personal. Yeah. So I, I think I had a my, in my mind that I really wanted to be an illustrator, but I just didn't know how. Um, and, uh, and finding you was... An, um, the catalyst to that, I suppose. Thank you. Um, it was just an idyllic time. 
um, well, most of the illustrations were done on, in, on a farm, isn't it? They were. In Herefordshire. Yeah. Uplands Farm yeah. flat, yeah. Yeah, and uh, a lot of the time I was recovering from a, um, a, an eating disorder, wasn't it? Yeah, you had a, you'd and, had a bad time in the yeah. West End, hadn't you? Yeah. So I just yeah. uh, I plowed myself into it, into trying to visualise these stories, and um, but that's where it really all began. And we had two cats, two wonderful cats called Cider and Rosie. Cider and Rosie, which I which I painted. Show you. There you go. There you are. <laughs> there we are. Cider and Rosie. Um, I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> but, um, I mean, really, Up Uplands Farm was a special place. It it it, it was a, a very small uh, converted garage we were living in. Mm -hmm. Quite a large garage, and not as bad as it sounds. But we were surrounded by fabulous countryside, mm -hmm. um, and it was it was quite a mystical place. I mean, you you, you think you saw a fairy once in yes, the bathroom, I did. or. A, yeah. And, when uh, I was pregnant, when you were pregnant. Isabella, yes, our yeah. Yeah. and uh, strange things happened there, which we could talk about all day. But it was it was just so charming, and uh, there was a big pine tree outside the window. And every evening, well, I'm the... trying to find the uh, orchard because that's what really inspired the blossom maker. Yes, the orchard. Yeah, which is lots fun. lots of strange things happened, mm. and that story mm. was one example. I mean, mm. one year the the orchard right next to where we lived was full of really saggy white blossom. Uh, apple blossoms normally pink or pink tinge, but this year it was just white and heavy, wasn't it? Really heavy blossom. And we, we had this habit of, of drinking wine and, and sitting in the long grass with the cats and, and having great a great time in the orchard. And uh, I suddenly looked at this and, and knew that somehow weird words were coming into my brain. So I just got up and said, I've got to write. And um, and I went into the uh, in, into the uh, the farmhouse, and I wrote in about two hours the blossom maker, and it wasn't the only odd experience. Uh, another example would be uh, Grandma Soul, where Heather woke up one morning, more or less sat bolt upright, and said, "I've just had a dream that this old woman, like a kindly witch, was murdered by evil men." And they, they, they put her soul in a box and they bound the, the box, a wooden box, with, with briar and, uh, and the soul couldn't escape. Could you write about that? So I did. I, I, I started to write about that. But what we didn't realise at the time is what Heather had dreamt of and what I described in writing is a dibbuk box, basically, which is, in, I think, in Judaic tradition, is when an evil spirit is trapped inside a box, a bit like a genie in a lamp. Mm. Apart from Grandma in our story, isn't evil, she's a kindly person. But uh, it, it's another weird, there are weird elements to these stories which, which haunt me still. A kind of um, purpose behind them, driving us both, I think. Well, it was always very magical there, wasn't it? Like you said, we. I did see a, uh, a strange being on the on you, the you, you did yes on the shelf of the, the bathroom when I was putting them and I, I always think maybe it was because I was <laughs> it does make you feel a little bit strange being pregnant you do see things but but um but yeah. you, you were very frightened I remember you yeah. g going in I had to go in with you and and you were still convinced that this 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 being was going to be there. Mm. And that it, it was after your baby. You, it was very atavistic we stuff. Never really und we never really lived in the countryside before then. We didn't quite know, realise how magical it was to be around nature. Yes, yes. Um, and like the, the, it was very dark always. There was no light. Very dark, hardly. yeah. Uh, so you, got, you had to get used to that. And we, we weren't used to that. I wasn't used to that. I've always lived in a town or um, a city of you know, London. Nottingham, and I never really um, understood how dark it could get, and that that always made me feel um, a bit worried. But then eventually, I did get used to it, and, and I actually quite liked it at the end. And there was like um, one night I remember there was like chaff, cock chaffers, cock chaffers yeah, on the window, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, 
What's that? Because of course we all sort of like thinking, oh, it's a ghost. <laughs> well, <laughs> bump, bump, well, it wasn't bump, ghost. Yes, no. um, It was these huge bugs about that big, weren't they? And they attracted were like, to our light, yeah. weren't they? Because we were there only like for miles, I think. Yeah, yeah. they were. And then we had one another incident when Isabella was born. We had, I've never seen them before in my life. Because um, um, you just don't get that in, the, in you know, if you live in a town or, you know, Nature seems to be less um, when you were in, in the in the actual countryside. It seems that it became nature finds you, doesn't find it? Find you, mm. and it, it comes quite closer to you, doesn't it? And and uh, enwraps you, makes you feel um, protected in a way. I felt, and uh, it was. But well, you're going to talk about the ichneumon wasps yes, that came was. in. And, yeah, yes, yeah. Well, that was a shock. We, we didn't know what they that were. Was a, <laughs> that was like, a bit frightening. I, we didn't know what they I were. Got, we wafted them away, and then suddenly we realised they were wasps. Well, one of them got me on, <laughs> on the hand slightly, but uh, yeah. An orange, orange little thing. That's sort of like that. uh, and we, ha we had that spring come up just outside our bathroom window, the very bathroom where Heather saw the fairy, and a spring came out of the bank. And in the middle of the spring was a a salamander, a female salamander. So we, we realised that there was flood water coming all around the all around the farm and they had to open up the storm drains. And we looked into this gulping water and there were two eyes looking back at us. And it was just that sort of place. And I think the place itself led to the atmosphere. But but also We spent like many a Christmas though, in the, like because these because we kind of weren't we were singletons for a long time. Oh yeah, we were. Um, and it was like a joy, wasn't it, to have a Christmas? Oh yeah. And uh, the so Christmas you wrote me a Christmas. That, that was a story. present for Heather, and I wrapped it up in like a scroll. Let's get to the 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 the, um, the time when we thought about the blossom, uh, not the blossom maker, the uh, mother's garden, because that was an interesting mm. one of ours, wasn't it? But well. well I mean, you wrote it, but um... it, it, I think uh, you wanted a, a modern version of Hansel and Gretel, and or or, or, or something inspired by Hansel and Gretel, really? and I think we both fastened on in your art and, and in my my writing. We fastened on the environmental themes, um, which twenty years ago, when that story was written, people were worried about the environment. But they weren't overly concerned. Not overly they? concerned. They were. Uh, and there, there is a scene of, yeah. of mass destruction, similar to what we're, we're actually seeing now, with, with you know trees burning and animals being destroyed because of um, nature out of balance. Mm. And I think that's the theme of that. And it is really weird, again, we, we were picking up on themes that only now seem to be um, very current. Uh, an example in the Bread for Toggle, which is about a man who becomes pregnant against his will, um, and he's visited by the doctor, who dresses up as the plague doctor, doesn't he, with the with the big um, the big beaky helmet, so he looks like a giant bird, and the doctor's wearing that because the man is toxic, masculine, and he smells really badly, uh, and. Um, yeah, of course, that's, that's become the symbol of these COVID times, you know, the, the plague doctor. And at the time, I, I'd studied medieval literature at, at Durham, and I, I knew about plague doctors, and I knew about this imagery, but, but you didn't, and I don't think anybody did, uh, and you asked me about it. And now, of course, everybody knows what a, what a plague doctor looks like because of COVID. And it's just another example of, of stuff we were doing back then, which seems to be more relevant, I think, now, to, to when we actually wrote it. We, we just thought we were creating interesting, fun, sometimes provocative stories, but, but uh, they seem to be more than that, to us at least. Yeah. But I mean, uh, as regards to the, um, the Mother's Garden, it's like, I had this, like, I don't know, sense, I've always had this sense that we, we take far too much of human beings than we need and uh, what we you know what we don't really concentrate on is 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 and what we've come far away from um, 
is the fact we don't actually um, look after our home. There's a yeah. animals do it. There's a medieval setting mm. to, to these stories in a way, medieval renaissance mm. for a lot of them. Mm. Uh, and I think that's just a way of of removing a reader's sensibility, dislocating the sensibility mm. in non too violent a way mm. from the present day. Mm. Uh, it, in, into circumstances that are still feasible, but it, into a, into a mm. landscape of the mind, a mythic landscape mm. where ideas can be explored. And, and fable does that very well, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It, mm. it, it um, it's it's quite gentle in a way because it's not lead, it's not um, focusing on 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 a certain time really, or a certain place. Uh, Mm. It's more focusing on on the the, the feeling of, the, of of a situation. The big stuff, really. The, yeah. the universalities. The emotional of... feelings. Mm. Mm. The um, the deeper sort of like senses, and and for a true story to really to to grapple with you with you is one that leaves it open for you to think about mm. it. Analyze, you know, your your place, in, if you like, or or your situation, and it's, and only you can discover that. Really, I would just. A say. lot of it comes from the subconscious. Mm. Sometimes I, it takes me a while to understand what I've written, mm. and that sounds that sounds bizarre, mm. but 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 sometimes stuff comes from deep within you, mm. and subconsciously you know what you're doing. But your, your conscious mind is thinking, what? And I, I, th I think that there are elements of that. Only gradually have I understood what what, what are in these stories. Um, so, you know, like, the be for me, the best kind of art is kind of de uh, developing your inner life and your surroundings and trying to understand it in your own way. Uh, but to to not lead your audience to 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 get people to think, you know, about their their lives. To, to create a resonance yeah. around issues, yeah. about a, a resonance around ideas, rather than just leading someone by the nose. I mean, John Keats said it. You know, poetry should come as naturally as the leaves on the trees, or it should not come at all. I think that's true of stories. And he also said he he hated literature that had a quote a palpable design on one. I don't think we have a palpable design in any one, but but um, but certainly there there are themes, there are issues there which I think are relevant. Of course, it, we also picked up on, and in your art in particular, you you picked up strongly on on uh, an Eastern European yes. kind of uh, imagery, really mm -hmm. clothes, ethos. Mm -hmm. Grandma Soul's very strong on that. Mm -hmm. um, we had we did have a honeymoon in Romania to see the the eclipse in 1999, mm. and and you took a lot of imagery back from Romania because we, mm. we really did travel. So there is a, there is probably a great deal of, of um, that when, when we went on that trip. Mm. It was like for me, it felt as if we were actually stepping back a hundred years. Yeah, uh, where where people still farmed in the old fashioned way. Because mm. we used to, we saw these beautiful. I mean, we know that everything's developed in the West, like the haystacks. And yeah, they, they, were like they went from square, they? didn't they? Yeah. And now they round, and and industrialization gone further down the road, and everything's gone digital now. But um, uh, what we what we saw there twenty years ago is it twenty years ago now? Twenty two, I think. Twenty two years, years, years ago, I think. Ago, yeah. We saw the eclipse. Yes. In 1999. Yes, it was, yeah. yes. And um, what we saw there was these um, uh, haystacks that had a, that were like a pole, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm. And it was, the hay was all gathered around it and tightly bailed in. And uh, I've never seen that And before. men in, in, in red shirts mm. and white shirts and blue shirts mm. with a scythe <laughs> went to quite some remote areas. Mm. And we saw old Romania, which is, which is fantastic. Mm. We um, went to Snagoff, didn't we? Snagoff Monastery. Monastery. That's that um, wasn't so remote, but we, we drove off to yeah. a lot of remote stuff. Yeah. Um, but but we did see a um, um, 
a monk, not a monk, um, what they call them? It was a monk, it was it an orthodox monk, monk and, an, monk. and a nun. Who, who were... And they were looking after the place. Yeah. And um, they, um, they were still wearing traditional costume then. And of course, it, it still the men, still there was a lot of people very traditional, and they were like women that you, you couldn't go into a. a um, no, no, you were told off, weren't you? Because you tried to go in, and you were told to cover your hair. Cover my hair up. Yeah. And mm. um, of course, you had to cover your legs up and stuff, because out of respect. We, we saw lots of but, lots of horse-drawn carts. Yeah, that's so still, that's still that. happening. Twenty odd years ago. Yeah, and we went to the Borgo Pass, didn't we? We did. Yeah. <laughs> So, so all this, all this imagery um, and, and experience. It didn't look red, that's for sure. No, no. <laughs> it certainly didn't look red. Oh, but all this imagery fed into mm. fed into your art, mm. didn't it? Quite um, strongly. But uh, we did actually vi uh, visit a museum um, with um, yeah, we did proper traditional yes. Romanian houses, and they were charming, weren't they? And, you, they, um, and you picked up on that, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I did, mm. um, because they had like um, lots of textile uh, stuff that they. Um, weaved or they crocheted yeah and uh, so everything was made handmade for, um so uh you know you, you, you go out to the shops it was something they would little details like the plates which are draped in like embroidered yeah, and scarves it was, and, and it was and sort of like old um traditional granny cottage yeah. wasn't it? with um with the carved wood mm.